Excuse me. Yeah, well, really, uh, if you would have heard, there was a tremendous amount of uh, noise and action and everything else. I started very quickly, and I think you know that. Well, I know. You, maybe you're giving me too much credit. You're used to giving me too much credit. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Well, President Trump saying that he was not happy with a chant by his supporters at Wednesday, or Wednesday night's rally. The crowd shouting, send her back, directed at Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, the first Somali-American woman to serve in Congress. Well, let's bring in Governor Mike Huckabee, former Arkansas governor and a Fox News contributor. Thank you for joining us. Great to be with you. Thank so, you, Heather. What the president had to say, was it enough? Well, it's about all he can say. I mean, no matter what he says, they're never going to accept it. I think we need to go back a couple of years and remember when these same Democrats who were, you know, tearing their garments because of the things either the president or his supporters have said, uh, were calling on uh, Sebastian Borka, my good friend and a good guy, uh, to be deported. The same people, Jerry Nadler actually said that we need to see his immigration papers and maybe need to send him back because he were accusing him of being a Nazi of all things. This is the insanity of today's politics. What we ought to be talking about, Heather, mm -hmm. is the substance of what people like Congresswoman Omar has said regarding boycott, divestiture, and sanctions on Israel. Well, before I just got we, back from there yesterday we, right, morning. But, I'm going to tell you something. That's crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Put that on the floor and let every member of the House vote on BDS. That'd be great. Let's just see yeah, where they we're stand. We're going to talk about that a little bit more with you in just a moment. But everyone keeps talking about moving on. Will the media allow the Republican Party, will the Democrats allow the Republican Party to do that? Or will they? this become, as Matt Schlapp said earlier in our segment, he was very fired up. He said this is the 2020 election. Well, Heather, you repeated yourself. You said the media and the Democrats, uh, they've become one and the same for the most part. Uh, no, they're not going to let it go. They can't. They got nothing else. All they've got is to try to attack the president personally because his philosophical underpinning of deregulating, lowering taxes, being strong with America is working. They can't defeat him politically because he won the election. So the only thing they're left to do is attack him personally. That's what they're left with. And so whether it's a, a legal challenge to him or trying to impeach him, look at what the best analysis of this is. Mm -hmm. This is a personal attack on him because they cannot defeat his policies and they can't argue that they have better ones because theirs failed, his are working, and that's where they're stuck, um, personal attacks. Mm -hmm. I don't think the American people are that stupid and they mm -hmm. can see through it. Let's bring up this tweet. This was from Lindsey Graham. He says, you know, being called uh, racist comes with the territory, basically, of being a Republican. Something I've learned, if you are a Republican nominee for president or president, you will be accused of being a racist. John Lewis compared John McCain's campaign to being like that of George Wallace. It comes with the territory, unfortunately. That's a sad state of affairs. It is a sad state of affairs. It's just a reality. And I, I appreciate Senator Graham for pointing out that John McCain was accused of being a racist, for heaven's mm -hmm. sakes. I mean, I, I don't hear anybody saying that today because he wasn't then uh, and he never was. But neither was Donald Trump. I mean, the fact is, if Donald Trump had been a racist all these years, don't you think it would have come out somewhere in the life that he lived, which was about as public as any elected official has mm -hmm. ever lived? And the fact is, a person doesn't just suddenly become a racist at the age of 72, having not been one up until that point. I mean, if people would just exercise enough brain cells to operate a flashlight, they would clearly recognize that th these charges are on their face laughable. Well, uh, Ilhan Omar, she uh, says that she's not going to let it go. In fact, she says she's going to be a nightmare for the president. Listen to this. He is threatened because we criticize him. But the reality is he is threatened because we are inspiring people to dream about a country That's right. That's right. that recognizes their dignity and their humanity. And when I said I was the president's nightmare, well, you're watching it now. His nightmare is seeing a Somali immigrant refugee rise to Congress. Well, some say uh, the nightmare she, uh, is how she deals with Israel. Let's go back to what you were talking about and the yeah. boycott. Um, and she likened it to boycotting the Jewish state as well and boycotts of na Nazi Germany. Yeah, the most ridiculous thing she said, and she said a lot of ridiculous things, is somehow equating Israel 
with Nazi Germany. I mean, I mean think of the irony of that. Uh, this is a country that was created in modern times uh, in response to the Holocaust in which six million Jews were savagely and in cold blood murdered by the Nazis. For her to say that shows either an ignorance of history or a chutzpah, if you will, uh, that exceeds anything I've ever seen. And as to her ridiculous claim that the president is losing sleep over her, I, I think it's pretty safe to say that I doubt the president has to take even half a baby aspirin to get to sleep over the things that this congresswoman says. Yeah, I do want to specify that this BDS resolution doesn't specifically mention Israel or the pro-Palestinian boycott, but she apparently talked to some media and says that it does uh, reference Israel. Thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure. Right. Thank you, Heather. Have a great Have a day. Good weekend.